Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad, board certified physician in cardiology, interventional cardiology, and internal medicine. I'm here to help you with all the information you need for your heart health and general health, and informing you about all the latest treatments in cardiology and medicine. If you are new to this channel, then definitely consider hitting the subscribe button below and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new video that I post. For my international viewers outside the United States, you can get translated subtitles of this video by pressing the closed caption CC button on the upper right part of your mobile device screen and selecting your preferred language from the settings. There has been suggestions over the past few decades that consumption of red meat and processed red meat are associated with increased incidence of heart disease and other diseases. Unprocessed red meat include beef, lamb, veal, and pork, and contribute several important nutrients like essential amino acids, vitamins including B12, and minerals like zinc and iron to our diet. Processed red meat include sausages, salami, and bacon. These meats undergo treatments like salting, smoking, and the use of chemical preservatives and additives to increase its shelf life and improve its taste. The use of red meat and processed red meat has been increasing globally over the past few decades. And so the question that lends itself is whether this increased meat consumption will lead to more heart disease and other diseases globally. I hereby review a few scientific studies that were published in reputable medical journals and review their results. The most recent published study was the Health Professionals Follow-up Study Cohort from the United States, conducted between the years 1986 through 2016. Results published in December of 2020 in the British Medical Journal. In this study, 43,000 professionals, including dentists, veterinary surgeons, pharmacists, optometrists, osteopathic physicians, and podiatrists, provided detailed information on their medical history, lifestyle, and typical diet. Questionnaires were completed biennially to update information on potential risk factors and occurrence of new diseases. About 10% of study participants suffered coronary heart disease events, and of whom less than half died as the result of the coronary disease event. The total unprocessed and processed red meat intake were each associated with a modestly higher risk of coronary heart disease. The risk was higher for processed red meat being 1.15 times higher than those who don't consume it, and it was 1.1% higher for red unprocessed meat. Compared with red meat, the intake of one serving per day of combined plant protein sources like nuts, legumes, and soy was associated with a lower risk of coronary heart disease. In another study published in the journal Circulation in 2020, 20 study to 2 million participants. Red meat intake was not associated with coronary heart disease, but processed red meat intake was associated with 42% higher risk of coronary heart disease. In a third study published in the American Journal of Epidemiology in 2013, nine prospective studies were included in a meta-analysis and included 1.3 million individuals. The consumption of processed meat and total red meat was significantly associated with all-cause mortality. Unprocessed red meat was not associated with increased death. In a fourth study published in the British Journal of Nutrition in 2014, 13 studies that included 1.6 million individuals were reviewed. Red meat consumption was found to be associated with a 16% higher risk of cardiovascular mortality. An increase of 100 grams per day in red meat intake was found to be positively associated with cardiovascular disease death. Overall, the study indicated that processed meat consumption could increase the risk 
of mortality and cardiovascular disease, while red meat consumption was positively but weakly associated with cardiovascular disease deaths. In general, these studies show a small rise in risk of disease at levels of 50 to 100 grams, which is 1.8 to 3.5 ounces of red meat consumed daily, with processed meat, which is salted, smoked, and cured meats being associated with a higher risk. There does not appear to be a measurable risk for eating red meat once or twice a week. Other disease associations of red meat and processed meat. It's worth mentioning that trials have also shown that intake of red meat and processed red meat is also associated with increased risk of type 2 diabetes, stroke, and colorectal cancer. Recommendations. The amount of red meat we should eat in a week should provide a balance between the advantages of eating red meat, which is a source of essential nutrients, and the disadvantages of increased incidence of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and colorectal cancer. It's important to understand that although the studies mentioned above link meat to poorer health, they do not prove a cause and effect relationship. On the other hand, the findings of many studies are consistent, strongly indicating that red meat consumption does contribute to chronic diseases with the risk highest with processed red meat. Research indicates that eating three and a half servings of meat per week is associated with a higher risk of disease and death. Putting this into context, a standard serving equals about three ounces a portion the size of a deck of cards. Eating a steakhouse fillet, which typically weighs 12 ounces, you consume roughly three and a half servings in a single meal. The professional body's recommendations is to eat less than this amount of red meat in a week. The World Cancer Research Fund advises that we limit consumption of red meat to no more than three portions per week. Three portions are equivalent to about 350 to 500 grams, about 12 to 18 ounces of cooked weight. They also advise that we consume very little, if any, processed meat. If you have any question about what I presented to you today, or any medical question in general, then subscribe to my channel and share your question in the comment section below, and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at Dr. Bolad, and send me a private Twitter direct message and I will reply to you. Please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad, helping you with your heart health and medical health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.